Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to class. Um, the essay topic that we are going to be dealing with today is of great place. And before we start the main essay, let me go over quickly some of the outstanding features of Francis Bacon's essayistic style. What we've had so far are essays on a number of topics and each topic has brought to us Bacon's viewpoints on some, some aspect of real life. Um, the topic that we're going to be dealing with today uh, might appear to be about something that does not concern all of us, but when we um, make an in-depth study of, of Great Place, uh, you will realize that it is as applicable to ordinary common people like you, like me, like others around us, as it is applicable for um, important people or people who have important positions in society, uh, maybe in a community, uh, maybe they had, uh, maybe they are people who have uh, importance on a national scale or even in, on an international scale. So it is as applicable to common people, to ordinary people as it is to great people. Now this essay we're going to divide into two lectures. So this is going to be your lecture 10 and lecture 11. All right, let's see what Bacon has to say about Great Place. And he starts off with um, a statement that is very frequently quoted. I've been telling you again and again how Bacon is one of the most frequently quoted uh, essayists in English literature. And um, this um, essay of Great Place is one of those in which you will find a lot of quotations. So he says, men in great place are thrice servants. I emphasize before also the fact that um, Bacon divides everything into three. And he'll give you three reasons, he'll give you three disadvantages, three advantages, and all the rest of it. So men in great place are thrice servants. Servants of the sovereign or state, servants of fame and servants of business. Now once he's given you these three examples, because this is an expository uh, essay, he's going to expose and um, define and describe what he means by men of great place being thrice servants, okay? So they have no freedom neither in their persons, nor in their actions, nor in their times. Again, he divides it into three. Person, action, time. He says they are thrice servants. And then he says they have no freedom of person because they are public persons. Um, they are public property. Think of all the important people and um, think of how uh, these people lead their lives. If you um, see people who are classified these days as VIPs or very important persons, you will see that they do not have any freedom in their person. They are public property, whatever they do, whatever they say is very frequently quoted. Now Bacon was writing about um, people in the 16th and 17th centuries. But so true are his words that even when you bring this um, quotation to the 21st century, you find out that public people or great people or important people are public property. They do not have private lives. And if they do, those private lives are also exposed to the public. If they go shopping, you have the media after them. If they go um, to a place to relax, you'll find the paparazzi 
um, they're trying to take photos if they have babies the, those um, children's pictures are also there in the media and all the rest of it so these people have no freedom they don't have freedom in their persons in their actions whatever they do um, whether they are uh, let's say visiting friends or having people over or they're going out whatever actions they do uh, are always um, the focus of the public's attention so when we uh, bring Bacon's uh, words and try to contextualize them try to put them in our own situation we realize that once you become an important person everything around you everything about you becomes public property nor in their times when they're going to do it how they're going to do it what they're going to do everything is known to the general public people are curious about their personal lives private and professional lives and so uh, you have the media constantly wanting to know about them so this is one of those places where you realize that Bacon writing um, what four or five hundred years uh, before our time has given us ideas which are as applicable today as they were in Bacon's times and um, you know that because he was um, living during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I and King James I of England um, he lived at a time when um, kings and queens and statesmen could not have private lives whatever they did um, was open to the public censure it was open to the public's attention um, and in fact um, Louis the 14th of France had taken this uh, thing so far that um, his courtiers assembled in the morning to see the king dressing up for court so no privacy whatsoever if you um, bring that to England and you see um, how Queen Elizabeth I lived her life and how King James lived um, his life in the court you'll see that whatever they did was open to uh, the public and their courtiers and therefore the general public knew whatever they were doing where they were going who was coming to see them etc etc so no privacy whatsoever and uh, men in great place are thrice servants servants of the sovereign or state because they have to do whatever their sovereign whatever their uh, ruler wants them to do or whatever their country demands of them servants of fame because uh, once you achieve fame then your entire life is dictated by that very fame and servants of business whatever their work is that comes before family or friends so um, as far as their business or their work or their profession is concerned that has to come before their personal private lives um, such people virtually have no private lives and that is what Bacon is trying to emphasize here it is a strange desire and here Bacon comes in with his personal ideas um, and then he exposes them and he also provides um, answers in the same place so it is a strange desire according to him to seek power and to lose liberty see what contradiction there is you gain power you lose liberty you lose freedom or to seek power over others and to lose power over a man's self so when I seek power I seek power over other people I seek authority over other people but I don't realize that I am losing authority over myself I can no longer 
dictate to myself. I can no longer do things the way I want to. The simple reason being my actions, thoughts, feelings are dictated by those over whom I think I have authority. So this is um, from the point of view of Bacon, this is an illusion of power. You want power, you want authority over other people. But what you don't realize is that you're losing authority over yourself. You don't have any choices left. So according to Bacon, it's a strange desire to seek power and to lose liberty. We ordinary people think that once we acquire power, once we um, gain authority, we can dictate. What we don't realize is we might be able to dictate to other people, but we lose our own liberty. So we no longer have freedom of movement, freedom of choice, freedom of thought, freedom of action, freedom of speech. Whatever we're going to say, do, think, feel is going to be dictated by those people over whom we seek power. So thrice servants, servants of sovereign or state and what did he say? Servants of fame and servants of business. All right. So it's a very strange desire according to Francis Bacon. All right, let's see what else he has to say. The rising unto place is laborious. You don't gain fame overnight and without any work. It involves a lot of work. It involves labor, as he says. And by pains, men come to greater pains. Beautiful words. By pains, men come to greater pains. Men go to a lot of trouble to gain fame. And once they think they have fame or power or place or position or status, what do you think they actually have? They actually take on headaches. So he says, by pains, men come to greater pains. You go to a lot of trouble to save yourself trouble. And what you realize when you achieve that power, that position, that place, is that your pain, your troubles have not been decreased. They've only been increased. They've only been magnified. So by indignities, men come to dignities. You think that you are being embarrassed when you work for a place of importance, when you work to gain fame, to gain power, position, authority. And you say that you're going to acquire a position which is going to be a position of dignity. It's going to make you dignified. Maybe. But what happens on the path to glory? What do you encounter on the path to success or fame or fortune? A lot of indignities. People insult you. You do things that you never dreamed you would have to do. You say things that you never dreamed you would have to say. And it is only then that you acquire a position of authority. So by indignities, by suffering, insults, injuries, abuses, by encountering people's rudeness, you acquire dignity. And that's a very heavy price to pay, according to Bacon. And once you reach there, what happens? He says the standing is slippery and the regress is either a downfall or at least an eclipse, which is a melancholy thing. 
Okay, so let's go back a bit. He says the standing is slippery. Fame, fortune, position, power, money, authority, standing, place, as Bacon calls it, is slippery. Fortune has been termed as being fickle. It's always fickle fortune, fickle fame. One person has authority one day, another has authority the next day. And the person who had authority yesterday could have gone into oblivion, deleted, you know, erased from memory totally. Because there's a new person now in authority. So the standing is slippery. It's very difficult to maintain that position of authority, to maintain that position of power. It's next to impossible because the standing is slippery. The place where you're standing is very slippery. This chair that I'm sitting in is a chair that lends authority, that lends position, power. I have power over you students because I am the teacher, you are the student. But what happens in a little while when I finish my lecture, this chair will be occupied by somebody else. So my standing is slippery. My chair is slippery. Right now I have a position of authority because I'm teaching you essay, I'm teaching you uh, Bacon's essayistic style. But what happens when you are finished with this and you want to go on to something like let's say poetry or drama or novel? then it's going to be another person occupying the same chair, getting the recording done in the same studio, and having the same authority over all of you. So my standing is slippery. This position of power, authority, is fickle. It's temporary. It's transient. We say that money brings power. So money does not stay in one place. I have it today. I buy something from you. You have it. I have an object. You have my money. You go and you deposit it in the bank. You get a piece of paper. And the bank has your money. So this is something that keeps on transferring. So fortune, fame, power, position, status, place, money, authority, these are all temporary. These are all transient states. So what Bacon is trying to emphasize here is that this is not here to stay. And for this moment of fame, you sacrifice everything. You have put back so many things. You have um, endured insult, maybe injury. You've been talked to very rudely. And for what? A moment of authority? So this moment of authority, it doesn't last long. It's yours today. It will be somebody else's tomorrow. After 10 minutes, it could go on to somebody else. So he says the standing is slippery. If the place of authority is so time bound, why do people take such troubles? Why do people go to such lengths to be in this position? It's beyond belief. It's beyond imagination. It's something that you cannot think about. All right? And what happens? The regress is either a downfall 
or at the very least it is an eclipse. So let me come back to our situation, you as students and I am the teacher. So I'm teaching you this, the very least thing that can happen to me is that I have this chair of authority for one hour and then the same chair is occupied by another person and then maybe I come back and do another recording. So this um, process shows that I have been eclipsed for a short time. For one hour somebody else was sitting here, somebody else was recording, somebody else was teaching you people. So the very least is an eclipse and the maximum is a downfall. You are no longer in power and you are not in a position to contest for power again. Now you get Bacon's point. He says the standing is slippery and the regress is either a downfall. Now that's the worst case scenario. The least case scenario, the best case possible is that you have an eclipse. You cannot say that fame is eternal. You can't say that I have this position and I'll always have this position. Things don't happen that way in real life. You have power, authority for a short time, you're placed on a very important position and then no more. So the standing is slippery. All right? Let's see what he has to say. Nay, retire men cannot when they would, neither will they when it were reason, but are impatient of privateness even in age and sickness which require the shadow like old townsmen that will be still sitting at their street door though thereby they offer age to scorn. Alright? Let me go over this again. Alright. So retire men cannot when they would neither will they when it were reason. People when they rise into greatness or when they are uh, placed in authority, they don't want to leave that place. We see this around us. We see it with politicians, we see it with businessmen who are in the world of making money, we see this um, in government servants, we see it all around us. People do not want to give up authority. They don't want to give up power. And yet, they are impatient of privateness. They want a private life also. Now, if you remember what I said uh, a while back, uh, what I said was once you come into a position of authority, once you come into power, then there is no public, uh, there is no private life. And yet, these people they want their privateness, they want to be exclusive and this is something that you cannot have when um, you are in a position of authority. So when these people come into power they don't want to let go of power. As he says even in age and sickness which require the shadow Age requires you to draw back, to step back a little. Sickness, illness, bad health, ill health requires that you take things easy. But people in power do not want to let go. Once you have power, you don't want to be without it. It's something that you have struggled for and therefore you want to retain it. Whatever position you have acquired, you worked hard for it, you've encountered insult and injury for it, you have had people being rude to you. 
now you don't want to let that position go regardless of age regardless of infirmity and the two are very frequently related when you're young you have very good health you have uh, strong faculties um, you can think fast uh, but with the onset of age you have a tendency to slow down and that is the time to let go according to Bacon but once you have occupied that position of authority you don't want to let go even in age and sickness which he says require the shadow age demands that you slow down your body slows down your mind cannot work as fast your reflexes are slower but what happens with the passage of age? You gain authority, yes, but you don't want to let that authority go. You don't want to let go of that power. You don't want to relinquish that position of authority to somebody else. Or maybe it's not age. Maybe you fall ill. Maybe your health does not permit those long working hours. Maybe um, your health doesn't permit uh, that strenuous work, that responsibility. Perhaps your mind cannot take it. Perhaps you get insomnia and insomnia is the basis of many other illnesses. When you have a position, you have responsibility, you have a lot of things to think about. And that disturbs your health so what happens when you have such a lot of responsibility and it leads to ill health are you willing to let go no you have struggled hard for this position you've worked hard for this place and you don't want to let it go so even in age and sickness which require the shadow People are not willing to let go their position and authority. Although, and here Bacon brings in a very interesting example, and he says that they are like old townsmen, old people, ordinary people, that will be still sitting at their street door, which though thereby they offer age to scorn. What are they waiting for? for someone to pass by you know this is something that we can um, relate to our own situation no matter where we are in the world old people and you will have noticed this in your family amongst your friends old people are sidelined if they're in a family um, with the passage of time the family members do not share everything with them um, they don't pay heed to what they're saying now this is something that is a little painful but you will be able to understand Bacon's essay better if you think of old people in your own family they are constantly complaining that they don't get attention are they not what is it that they require what are their basic requirements not food and clothing mind you they don't want food old people don't eat all that much they don't want new clothes all the time what they want is attention and attention is what they do not get they want someone to listen to them and people will not so old townsmen what they do is they'll put a chair by the door that opens into the street does that ring a bell does that bring to mind an elderly person in your family somebody who sits in a place where people are passing so that he or she will be able to see what's happening 
They don't want to be put in a room at the back of the house. They want to be in the front of the house. They want to be in the room that is called the living room or the, the parlor or the lounge um, or the sitting room, whatever. They want to be where the action is so that they can see. Although, and Bacon uh, makes a very, very um, strong remark here. He says, they offer age to scorn. People make fun of them. People make fun of them by not listening to what they're saying. So if you have somebody who's just sitting in a place wanting attention, what are the different ways in which they will call attention? They say, where are you going? What are you doing? And if you're leaving the house, when are you going to come back? Now it is not as you think, their business to know what time they are going to be back. But that's just their way of gaining attention. So next time an elderly person in the house asks you these questions, answer them. Because that is all that they need to know. That's all that is left for them. So old townsmen that will be still sitting at their street door, Although people do not pay any attention to them, do not give them any, um, any attention whatsoever, don't listen to them, don't pay any heed to them, they're still sitting there waiting to see what happens, who comes, who goes, what are people dressed like, where are they going. So they want to know all these. A strange comparison bringing in a place um, where you have men of authority and comparing it to an old townsman, the member of a family who is waiting for attention. A rather pathetic picture. But that is what happens when people stay in power for longer than they should. They stay in power although they cannot function. They're there as symbols, maybe just as icons. We had um, the death of uh, the president of Venezuela uh, not so very long ago, Hugo Chavez. He was a strong man, but he'd been ill for a very long time. So. That's not to say that he was not a person of importance. He was the president. He was the ruler. He was the head of state. But he was functioning in name only during his illness. So finally he died. So these old townsmen are being compared to people in importance people who have their moment of importance, who have their moment of fame and fortune, and then somebody else takes on. But that is something that is very difficult to realize. Once you get fame, you think it is yours forever. Once you get power, you feel that it is yours forever. You will not let go, no matter what happens. Okay. So certainly great persons had need to borrow other men's opinions to think themselves happy. Now, this um, long sentence I had uh, read out to you, and now we're going to break it up into pieces and see what Bacon has to say about great persons. And by great persons, he means people who are in authority, people who have um, finally acquired power one way or another. So he says that such people need to get advice from those who surround them. So borrow other men's opinions uh, is to seek advice, to think themselves happy. So they need people to tell them things. They need people to tell them that they are good administrators or that they are good statesmen etc etc to think themselves happy for if they judge by their own feeling they cannot find it because if you judge 
yourself. That's not um, the right evaluation. That's not proper evaluation. You cannot evaluate yourself. You have to make sure that other people evaluate you properly. So he says that men of um, great persons or men of great place need the advice, need the opinion of those who are around them. So if they think with themselves what other men think of them and that other men would fain be as they are, then they are happy. So uh, people who are around them are not as great. So they're not as powerful, as important, as famous, as rich maybe, as the men of great place or great persons. So these people who surround the great person will obviously want to be in this man's position. They are on the periphery, they do surround that person, but they are not that person. And that is a position that they would like, that is the position that they want to be in. So if these great persons that Bacon is talking about are surrounded by people who want to be in their position, and who say, you know, you're wonderful, you're such a great statesman, you're a wonderful politician, um, you are the best general, then these great persons are happy. If nobody wants to be in their position, in their place, what's there to be happy about? Okay? So, they need constant um, opinions, they need constant, uh, you could almost say flattery, to reassure themselves that whatever they're doing is right. But let's go on. For they are the first that find their own griefs, though they be the last that find their own faults. These are people who will bring up grievances, who will complain. But when you ask them to locate their faults, they will not be able to do it. Fault finding is easy to do in other people. But if I were to evaluate myself, I wouldn't find any faults with the way I do things. I might find other teachers not up to the mark, but I will not be able to say anything negative about my own teaching abilities. So certainly men in great fortunes are strangers to themselves. They don't know themselves. So they're strangers to themselves. And while they are in the puzzle of business, they have no time to tend their health, either of body or of mind. So because they are powerful, they occupy this position of importance and authority, they do not have time to think about their health. And he mentions the two types of health, health of body and health of mind. One is dependent on the other. So these are people who are important, who occupy uh, positions of authority, but they do not have time to think about their personal health. They're so busy trying to solve other people's problems that they do not have any time for their own problems. And of course, Bacon puts in a lot of Latin. Um, remember, he has um, education where the curriculum was medieval in nature, and being a jurist, being a theologian, uh, being such a learned man, he has a lot of Latin at his disposal, and there are times when he thinks that the Latin phrase um, expresses better what he is trying to say. So in place there is license to do good and evil. And this place refers to authority. When you are in authority, you can do good and you can also do evil. The latter is a curse. The evil part is a curse 
for an evil the best condition is not to win okay power to do good is the true and lawful end of aspiring on that uh, path to success there are two thoughts that could come to your mind one is that you want power to do evil the other is that you want power to do good according to Bacon the power to do good is the true and lawful end of aspiring so all trouble all insults all uh, problems that are encountered on the path to success or fame or fortune are justified only if the reason to acquire power is to do good and not evil yes you do have people who want power so that they can do evil deeds but they are not the kind that Bacon would um, consider people who are in great place and who have achieved, achieved the ultimate of aspiration. For good thoughts, and here he be begins another um, train of thought, and he says, good thoughts, though God accept them, yet towards men are little better than good dreams, except they be put in act and that cannot be without power and place as the vantage and commanding ground. Okay, now he's giving you a thought here, an idea. And this statement, and again this is one of those complex sentences. See, we have graduated from the very simple, from the very short sentences to sentences where Bacon is um, giving you different ideas in the same sentence. So good thoughts are according to Bacon no better than good dreams unless they're put into action. A very good idea that he presents. Good thoughts are fine you know, we are told that the Almighty um, knows our intentions and if our intentions are good, then the, our actions, our deeds will automatically be good. But according to Bacon, that is not so. He says good thoughts are no better than good dreams. What you need is good thoughts followed by implementation, action. That is what Bacon recommends. And this action, this um, doing cannot take place in the absence of power and position. It's only people who um, are in positions of authority who can actually do good. It's only people who are in power and authority and position who can uh, contribute to society and so those who do achieve power those who do acquire power and place as Bacon calls it it is mandatory for them to do good they have to do good they have to work for the betterment of mankind they have to improve conditions for those who are around them because people who do not have power according to Bacon cannot do much they can have good thoughts, but they cannot implement those ideas. They can't put them into practice. So good thoughts are not sufficient. They must be followed by action. Action which will benefit their community, which will benefit their nation, which will benefit mankind. So thought followed by action, that is how Bacon sees it. It has to have 
um, implementation. Without implementation, good thoughts, he says, are like good dreams. Meditant good works is the end of man's motion and conscience of the same is the accomplishment of man's rest. For if a man can be partaker of God's theater, he shall likewise be partaker of God's rest. So he brings in a totally different idea this time and he says merit and good works. This is the ultimate achievement for men. You must have merit, you must have hard work, you must have deserved that position and then good works. If you have merit, you will also do good works. It is not enough to be in that position. You must also think about your position and how it can benefit those who are around you. So merit and good works is the end of man's notion and then he goes on to say if a man can be partaker of God's theater. Um, was it Shakespeare who said all the world's a stage? So in that situation you and I are actors. We are on the world stage. We are performing and in time this performance will come to an end. But while the performance goes on and while we are there in this theater that God has designed for us on this stage where we are performing, Bacon says if we can perform in God's theater, we can also rest with God, as he says, partaker of God's rest. And there he brings in the Judeo-Christian concept of the Sabbath, of this universe being um, created in six days and God declaring the seventh day the day of rest. So the seventh day, the Sabbath, the Sabbath, is the day of rest. If men in power are actors on the stage of the world, then they also deserve rest, just as the Bible says that God created this universe in six days and on the seventh day he declared rest. Therefore, these men in great place also deserve rest. In the discharge of thy place set before thee the best examples, for imitation is a globe of precepts. And from this point onwards, Bacon's um, tone changes totally. Thus far, what he has been explaining is what is great place? How do you get to great place? What are the plus and minus points of people being in authority? What is this position of authority? Now his tone changes and it becomes more peremptory. Now he's not describing now he's telling people the do's and don'ts, what they should do and what they should not. And he starts off by saying, in the discharge of thy place, and this thy refers to the man in power. In the discharge of thy place, set before thee the best examples. Do not go for the worst. Always aim for the highest. Aim for the best. So when he says, in the discharge of thy place, thy place refers to thy duties, your position, the power that you exercise over other people, the authority that this position gives you. 
So in the discharge of thy place, set before thee the best examples, for imitation is a globe of precepts. A precept is an example. And since you are, and this thy now refers to the you in power, the individual who has authority, who has fame and fortune. So this individual now forms the focus of the remainder of this essay, where Bacon says, this is what you must do and this is what you must not do. So imitation is a globe of precepts. You have to follow examples that have been laid before you, but Bacon's advice, nay, his command is, and he's, you know, he started ordering now. It's not so much advice. It's more of this is what you must do, this is what you must not do. So it's one degree higher than advice. So he says, set before thee the best examples because your duty now is to follow examples, to follow precepts. And these precepts, Bacon says, have to be the best precepts. And after a time, set before thee thine own example and examine thyself strictly whether thou didst not best at first. Neglect not also the examples of those that have carried themselves ill in the same place. Not to set off thyself by taxing their memory, but to direct thyself what to avoid. Now he's giving you a lot of different ideas in this slide and he says, once you have been in that position for some time and you have followed the best examples, then comes the time, the moment when you need to examine yourself, when you need to evaluate yourself. So you don't evaluate yourself from the very beginning. First you follow the best examples and then, and then only, can you examine yourself, look inside yourself and see what you find there. See what faults you have, see what mistakes you've committed. Neglect not also the examples of those that have carried themselves ill. And when you are examining yourself, and when you're following the best examples, also, he says, follow, I'm sorry, not follow, but also look at the examples of those that did badly. As he says, those that have carried themselves ill, those who have not made their lives as important people, lives that can be followed. So those that carried themselves ill, those that could not do such a great job of the administrative position or post to which they were appointed. But the idea is not so that you say, oh, you know, I am such a wonderful person. I have not done this. The reason why Bacon wants you to look at those who have carried themselves ill is to direct thyself what to avoid. Not so that you can say, oh, you know, he did things so badly and look at me, I've done such a wonderful job. That is not the aim. The aim is to know what not to do, to know what is to be avoided to be aware of the fact and to therefore carry yourself according to that. So as he says, you follow the example of the best people, but you also must look at those who did not do a good job, who were not good people. And the reason is not so you can praise yourself, but so that you know what you are to avoid and what you are not to do. 
So he's giving you the do's and don'ts, yet you notice how the tone of the entire essay has changed. And now he's coming to where he's telling these people who occupy a great place, as he calls it, what they are to do and what they are to avoid. And he tells you the first thing is that she, they have to follow the best examples. But the worst examples are also to be studied, not to be followed, but to be studied. The reason for the study not being so that you can say, oh, I'm a wonderful person, you know, I have done so well. Look at this person, he made such a mess when he was in this position. That is not the reason. The reason is so that you do not go and do exactly what this other person did. All right? Now, we'll stop here. We will not continue this essay further. This is something that we will do in the next lecture. But let me quickly recap what we have done today and what Bacon says about great place. And you know that this is the kind of uh, essay in which he's talking about um, a topic that concerns all of us and it's not the fact that since we are never going to be in that position of authority so we don't need to um, study this we don't need to find out what Bacon thinks of, uh, of great place this is something that applies to our situation no matter what our position may be each one of us on an individual level is important in some way, in some place, at some time. So when we get to that place where we have importance, where we have authority, where we have power, then we need to know how we are to conduct ourselves. It's a long climb, it's a long journey. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, whether you are um, working for success as a student, as a teacher, or um, whether you are uh, planning to occupy a position of authority in the public administration of your area or nationally or even internationally. There are certain things that you need to know and certain things that you need to be very careful about and one of these is that when you do occupy that position of authority you have to be very careful that you follow only the best examples do not follow the worst examples follow the examples that have been left by good people do not follow the examples that have been left by bad people but study these examples and Bacon wants men of great place or men in great places to study these examples not so that they can praise themselves and launch into self-appreciation but because they must know what exactly it is that they need to avoid if they are to make a success of themselves. They have occupied that position of authority, fine. But that position has to be maintained. That position must be one where the coming generations look back and say, so-and-so was a good man and a great person. So, I leave you here for now and we'll do the rest of this essay in the next lecture. Thank you for your patience and Allah Hafiz.